Arc 6, The Corridor of Memories Chapter 53, A Voice Chimed The volatile tail stinger which came flying towards them shattered the stone aisle, causing an eruption of smoke as the destruction spread rapidly. Feeling the spectacle seemingly in slow motion, Subaru witnessed a petite young girl in a dress jump into the core of the vortex of the terrible destruction unfolding before his eyes. With her vertically rolled hair fluttering, jumping into the destruction head-on had been Beatrice. Courage no, foolhardiness. Though a matter of course, the petite young girl's build was fragile, it had much less capacity to withstand the tail stinger's blow than the stone monument. Should she even try to act as a shield, the young girl, with her stature, would not be able to obstruct any strike above Subaru's chest. In other words, it was not but an impulsive action, not but a death futile. Just as how the sobbing Subaru, with his face stained with nasal mucus, had grasped Echidna's sleeve. Just as how he had ultimately called out Julius' name, who had been scorched in the flames of deeds. Just as how he had tried to slam Ram's head into the wall, and had not abided by the illusionary young girl's advice. Beatrice too, had overlooked the impossible, and tried to receive and halt the tail stinger. Subaru, whoa. Beatrice, incomplete EMT in fact. At that instant, Beatrice, who had appeared forth, grasped Subaru's hand, and held her empty hand aloft ahead. At the same pace with the young girl's shout, something invisible to the eyes similar to energy flowed out of Subaru's body. Before Subaru, whose head was tottering, the tail stinger's blow was blocked by a seeming light screen which had been activated in front of Beatrice's pointing palm. The shockwave, which gave one the impression of this being the last thing one gets to see was blocked by the defensive wall which had Beatrice's palm as its center, and it unrolled the damage onto the environs, seemingly avoiding Subaru and the others. The launch tail stinger did not end with a single blow, and rained upon them continuously. However, all of it was blocked by the shield which had taken the form of the young girl named Beatrice, and led the damage onto their rear. The terrible shock wave blew violently, one of the scattered fragments of the aisle grazed Subaru's cheek. The noise became further distant, in the situation where his field of vision became white, and as he squinted his eyes due to the pain of his cheek, Subaru had his glance robbed by Beatrice's back. The titanic scorpion which had been visible for a single instant, if this was indeed that scorpion's tail stinger which had rained incessantly upon them then it was a matter of course that it was a mortar which could effortlessly turn a human body to dust. Having that be shielded by a young girl with such a small build, gave Subaru the chance to pick up his life. An instant before, he had been thinking of what unimaginable hell must he endure, having continued to wish for salvation from God. Subaru had no room to be cursing his own misfortune, and close to his awareness, an existence separate from Beatrice, or the scorpion had been present in the corner of his field of vision. That was Echidna, who had been dragged into this attack, and exposed to the same damage. She had once declared acting separately and tried to part ways with Subaru and Beatrice, but immediately preceding the commencement of the attack she had been restrained by Subaru, and thus dragged into the situation. Fortunately, she had also been in the location which Beatrice was protecting so the tail stinger's damage had been obstructed by the light screen and did not reach through. However, that was all. What Beatrice had blocked was merely the direct damage that had been rained upon them by the tail stinger. She had not been able to defend against the secondary damage that the tail stinger brought with itself. In other words, Echidna, whoa, ah. Uh. Raising her voice faintly, Echidna lost her balance and collapsed backwards. Though she stepped back in order to support her body, there was no floor to support her legs. Shattered by the tail stinger's attack, the aisle crumbled halfway. As a result, the structure of the tower's aisle was damaged and due to the collapse of the floor, ceiling and walls, Echidna lost space to step on. Upon being abandoned into an unknown space, death due to falling would be inescapable. Instinctively comprehending that fear, a sense of impending crisis levitated in Echidna's eyes. Subaru, Huck. Subaru instantaneously stepped ahead and grasped Echidna's hand, preventing her from falling to death. Echidna, Natsuki-kun. Beatrice had grasped his right hand, while he grasped Echidna's with his left hand. Thanks to Reed's coercive surgery his shoulder was still in, the pain was deep-rooted, his shoulder may get dislocated if overused. Without handing the responsibility over to Beatrice, who was busy desperately catching the tail stinger, Subaru braced his legs as he gnashed his molars, and had no choice, but to muster the entirety of his strength in order to restrain Echidna's body weight. Subaru, G.H., ya. Yeah. Regardless of her small stature, Echidna possessed the weight of a human. Lifting up a human is not an easy task to begin with. Much less with a single hand, much less by a wounded person, much less with the other person being uncooperative due to this crisis even upon being pulled, the danger of falling had not been reduced. Though that was something which was well understood even if not given any thought. Why he braved this risk. Echidna, don't do something which will make me surmise something about you. Subaru, like, I care. It was just instantaneous. Echidna, that response. Does seem fitting of Natsuki Kohen as well. Overlapping the exhausted soliloquy, he refuted Echidna's remarks, whom he had saved reflexively. Though unshapely she turned her body around and with the support of Subaru's arm, somehow laid foot upon the crumbled floor. Somehow supporting her actions until the very end, Subaru looked down onto his arm. 
Letters engraved his wounds, patterns of black speckles covering it which he did know happened when, painful and fierce white scars all over his body remained which had been carved by his own volition. Subaru, it, moves better than, what's in the limits? Of my memories? His arms functioning being better than what he remembered, or the countless scratches on them. His physique, which had become slightly stronger, narrowly managed to save Echidna from falling to death. Though his body was too defective and limited for the execution of the Book of the Dead plan. Echidna, somehow I managed to get back up. Beatrice. How are things on your end? Beatrice, about to hit the limit, I suppose. About time. Putting her unfitting emotions somewhere else, Echidna, having climbed up, called out to Beatrice with a grim expression. At her call, Beatrice stiffened her lovely cheeks and responded, and at the very next instant. Bishayan. The scorpion, which must have unleashed a rapid fire of the tail stinger, clung to the ceiling and pointed its enormous pincers towards them while letting out a cry. Subaru, Huck. With the seemingly sighting down pincers closing in, Subaru had his thoughts slowly washed away. According to his ordinary knowledge, when speaking of a scorpion rises a strong image of a venomous stinger, but the truth is, over the thousands of species of scorpions venomous species were only a few dozen in number. In that case, what would be the weapon of a scorpion which hunts without venom? Of course, those pincers would be its weapon. Sharpness, or perhaps it should be called cutting strength instead. It may seem less hazardous when compared to a venomous stinger, but should the scorpion be this large its killing ability anyhow cannot be made light of. That was also made clear through the spectacle of the walls or floor of the tower, which had managed to barely hold their structure, being mints like tofu being cut with a knife. Beatrice, Nurak. Beatrice evaded the spectacle, seemingly a symbol of destruction and massacre, by jumping and rebounding with an unbelievable leap no, by flying unnaturally, as if abusing the laws of inertia. It was a queer sensation of seemingly escaping the effect of gravity with Beatrice at the center Beatrice grabbed the lower back of Subaru and Echidna's clothes, taking a large distance away from the scorpion's attack. And with the new distance in between, Echidna prepared the fingers of her right hand in the direction of the scorpion's face. Echidna, LG Wald. White lines of heat were fired from each of her five fingers respectively, the five beams mowed down the aisle like the claws of a giant and scorched the face, right pincer, and shell of the scorpion clinging to the ceiling. Perhaps due to being unable to endure that strength and damage, the scorpion vehemently waved about its tail stinger and right pincer, and whilst slipping into the dust which erupted due to the aisle's destruction, retreated to the rear. Echidna, Jewald. 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 Subaru, wait. Calm down, Echidna. It ran away. That thing ran away. It ran away. While the scorpion drew back into the plume of smoke, Subaru bound Echidna's arms back, who all the more refused to halt her attack. Even after that Echidna continued struggling for some time, desperately glaring towards the other side of the plume of smoke, finally relaxing her body and entrusted her body weight onto Subaru. Echidna, ha, ha, ha. D did it do it? Subaru, not, totally. It probably ran away. Subaru shook his head horizontally before Echidna, who was short of breath and in an unbelievable condition. The plume of smoke was yet to clear away, but it gave the impression that the scorpion's corpse was not present there. In fact, even right now, he was trembling with the fear of the tail stinger's counterattack from the other side of the plume. Subaru, but, isn't that? Eh? That one just now was. Beatrice, a witch beast in fact. A boorish fellow, which suddenly appeared onto this fourth layer. The tremors in the lower floors, and the witch beast of the fourth layer. On top of that, the abnormalities in the upper layers. Subaru, up, down, inside. Are there problems happening everywhere? Subaru changed his expression and turned around upon Beatrice's report, as she made a serious face. Certainly, Julius was continuing the battle in the lower floors, and the existence of that scorpion that which beast had become clear. It was also convincing to believe that the abnormalities in the upper floors were happening due to Reed's descent. Echidna, though it seems you do not realize that one of those problems is you. As if trying the very basis of Subaru's thoughts, Echidna stood alone, having distanced herself from Subaru's chest. She wiped the sweat off her forehead, gazing at Subaru with vigilance she found impossible to eliminate. In her pale cerulean eyes was vigilance, suspicion, along with anxiety, perplexity. Echidna, just what? What are you? Where do you stand, what do you want? Subaru, I don't know the details. I said, didn't I? I don't know what occurred, and what's happening either, the same as you. After all, I. Beatrice, amnesia. Subaru's muttered weakly in response to Echidna's question, unable to respond with nothing but the same former perplexity. The one to claim the last one was Beatrice, who had been lost in thoughts with a serious expression. Amnesia, Subaru had opened his heart to subjects regarding that only before the two of Amelia and Ram. In other words, Beatrice and the others are aware of the cage, as well as Subaru's excuses. And despite knowing, this was the attitude Beatrice possessed. Echidna too, thought as she nearly ran out of words. Echidna, 
How did you escape from the cage? Subaru, when I took notice, I was lying outside with a broken shoulder. Though he answered straightforwardly and honestly, he did not expect to be believed. However, overlapping lies with lies leading to gradual deterioration is what the current situation was. Though his self had even prayed to God with a dripping nose to award him with punishment, but there was no longer any point in keeping up appearances and pretenses. With that mental state Subaru responded to Echidna without any falsehood, making her hesitate to say something for a brief period. But, after that she immediately closed her eyes and resumed without looking at Subaru. Echidna, why did you save me just now? Echidna, had you not offered your hand, I would have unmistakably died. Taking Anna's body with me, it surely would have been a death terribly filled with regrets. As if other human affairs, the question distanced him away by a single step. However, the reason she dared to do that was the same as the reason why she abstained from looking at Subaru's face, eyes. Namely, a last resort to ensure she did not air her judgment due to her emotions. With Echidna such judgment before him, Subaru pondered. Why had his self offered his hand to Echidna? Was it because Julius had entrusted him in the end? Did those words make Subaru offer his hand? Subaru, it was instantaneous, I don't know. However, shaking his head left and right, Subaru denied that notion. Certainly, Subaru had thought back to Julius' words and moved in order to prevent Echidna from acting separately once. But when her life was actually in danger, the reason why his body moved was not due to such deliberate thinking. He did not know, why had his self made such a move? Subaru, it's not like everything needs a reason, you know? It was sudden. Everything was sudden. That's why I... Prepared to despair, Subaru expressed the emotions within him whilst faltering. He thought that he would undoubtedly receive a cold response by Echidna, having made her hear this. Echidna. That might be, the true nature of the human known as yourself. Subaru, eh? So spilled out Echidna, relaxing her shoulders having stiffened herself up before his eyes. Upon hearing that Subaru stared in amazement, eaten by the dumbfoundedness. Subaru stood in mute amazement as Echidna shrugged her shoulders upon his gaze. Echidna, it is inevitable that we would want to quarrel here. It would also be foolish to remain here for long and accept the witch beast's second attack. Let's move. I want to unite with Julius. Subaru, I am. Beatrice, agreed, in fact. For now, let's get away from this place, I suppose. Echidna and Beatrice indifferently determined their plan, leaving out Subaru, who was at sea. Echidna ascertained the area behind Subaru and Beatrice, and Beatrice tightly grabbed Subaru's hand. Upon that tiny sensation he looked towards the young girl as Beatrice with a deep nod. Beatrice, do you not remember taking Betty outside as well? Subaru, I'm sorry. I don't know what you're talking about. Beatrice, it is fine, in fact. Hearing the terribly transient emotions of loneliness mixed in Beatrice's voice, Subaru felt as if he had committed the most dreadful crime in this world. But Beatrice shook her head left and right before Subaru, who was bleached with a fear of unknown nature. And concealing herself's lonesome feelings, carved a daring smile upon her lips. Beatrice, even if Subaru has forgotten, it is still present within Betty's heart. It is impossible for what Subaru engraved into Betty's heart to fade away at all, I suppose. That's why, it's fine for now in fact. Subaru, Beatrice. Beatrice, even if Subaru forgets, Betty will never forget. Betty will always remember. And, Betty will also make Subaru remember, I suppose. For that, Betty will do whatever she can, in fact. That had been a response far too dazzling for Natsuki Subaru, who was standing here all alone. Just how many predicaments had she overcome, how many times had she tempered her heart into steel, to make a girl this young wield such will? Subaru, ah. He could be saved, and upon that sensation Subaru held his breath. Spontaneously, a sensation welling up deep within his eyes tried to kill Subaru, as he braved letting that warmth overflow. Beatrice supported that strenuous effort of Subaru's, by gripping to his hand without saying a thing. By merely gripping his hand, it proved to be his support. Echidna, it does not seem to be possible to tread the path Natsukikuan came from due the witch beast's attack just now. Though undeniably dangerous, it seems there is no choice, but to utilize the side of the isle which remains alright, where the witch beast retracted to, and move. Beatrice, Echidna, you too. Echidna, talking about forgiving, not forgiving, doubting, not doubting is unsuitable for this place. Regardless, the suspicions I have cannot be cleared. However, the situation does not allow for that. Creating an order of priorities is an indispensable ability in business. I witnessed that, right by Anna's side. That is why, no more arguments were to be had in this place. That must be Echidna's conclusion. Subaru also avoided objecting to Echidna's judgment, who had made compromises and possessed feelings of rejection, and decided to abide by the judgment of the two. There was no change in his feeling of wanting to run away even now. However, he wanted to believe that if he crouched down, and had his hands on his head, a scene further befitting of pleading for would await him rather than simply offering his prayers to God. 
Behind him, the Isle Subaru came running from was in a terrible state. Receiving the attack by the scorpion's tail stinger as if a catastrophe, most of it had been converted into piles of debris and wreckage, and did not seem like it could be used, just as what Echidna had said. What Beatrice's magical safeguard had protected was only her own and the other two's lives. Even if they tried to go towards Amelia and the others, who were moving separately, or Julius who was fighting in the fifth layer, they had no choice but to advance upon that side of the isle which the scorpion had retreated towards. Subaru, ugh. Ahead of jumping over the hole due to which Echidna nearly fell to her death, after clearing up the smoke in the part of the isle her white lines of heat had grilled, a reason for Subaru to spontaneously groan fell over there. It was that which beast's tail, which had perhaps fallen off from its roots. Echidna, I see, it means there was no counterattack. Its means of attacking splintered off, which is a bit of good news, I guess. Beatrice, that's what it seems, I suppose. Don't fall off the floor, in fact. It's time to jump over, I suppose. Beatrice and Echidna nodded to each other as they looked at the fallen tail, which even had the stinger attached. By appearance it was overwhelmingly grotesque, but the witch beast had certainly lost its means of long-ranged attacks with this. Of course, the circumstance in the lower floors was that countless centaurs clad in flames were surging forth. Just because the danger of that one witch beast had diminished it could not possibly be said that the hazards present within the entire tower had reduced. Subaru, here. Subaru lightly jumped over the hole, while continuing to hold Beatrice. Beatrice's body was light, far too light for any comparison. The fruits of an year's worth of labor which Subaru felt in his own body which were nowhere to be found in his memories her likeness was seemingly irrespective of that. Keeping that in the back of his mind, Subaru turned his eyes once again towards the fallen tail which lied ahead of the hole on the aisle. The tail had launched a rapid fire of the tail stinger as if a catastrophe, but its structure was completely different from the scorpion's biological features which Subaru was aware of, to an extent that it could be called a separate article entirely. Though a matter of course, the venom stinger of a scorpion which Subaru knew could not be used for things like shooting and probably couldn't be regenerated either. Above all, evident from the isle's destroyed condition, it had not been firing the tail stinger as an object. It had been firing power which resembled a stinger in form. Basically, it could alternatively be said that just like Beatrice's light screen and Echidna's white lines of heat, what the scorpion was firing was something akin to magical stingers. Naturally, since it had been utilized as a stinger it would no longer be able to invoke it after having lost its tail, that is what he wanted to believe. Subaru? Thinking that far, Subaru embraced unease. He had noticed it after observing the fallen tail. That fallen tail had been cut off nearly from what was its root, but the wound's mouth appeared as something unusual. Had it been burned off by Echidna's lines of heat, Regardless of cutting strength, there should have been scorch marks remaining on the wound. As a matter of fact, the surrounding part of the isle which had been struck as well also had such burn marks. However, there were no traces of that on the scorpion's fallen tail, but instead had an awfully clean cross-section. Subaru B. Subaru noticed, something was strange. Far too late. The tail fallen on the floor which he had kept at the edge of his field of vision, quaked with a start. An instant later, a light burst open. There exists a mechanism, named autotomy. A phenomenon primarily witnessed among arthropods and lizards, is often called things like lizard's tail and refers to the action of cutting off a part of one's own body for escaping from foreign enemies. This action is also seen among pincers of crabs, and in other words, the witch beast shaped as a scorpion had perhaps done something similar. In the case of a lizard practicing autotomy upon its own tail, the detached portion of the tail moves around for a while and serves the purpose of distracting the enemy, while the real deal escapes. Of course, the tail possesses no such consciousness and only acts reflexively, but it is an example of a species which practices autotomy being capable of such reflex action. Then, would this not be possible as well? Once the prey gets close to the detached tail, it would explode and spread damage, a duty like that of a landmine, and also granting the ability to do so to the amputated part. Subaru, ugh, gh, ugh. He wailed. Whilst spilling out a wail from his throat, slowly and steadily, Subaru dragged his feet. As for why he was dragging them, it was not because of fatigue. The problem was physical. With a large and deep tear in the flesh of his left leg, and in a situation where he continuously bled from that wound he had no choice but to move that way. And what Subaru was dragging was not his body alone. Enough now. Leave me and go. So pronounced Echidna, having lost all of her strength, as she was dragged along by Subaru who was dragging his feet. Subaru took both of her armpits in his arms, pulling her from behind and anyhow leaving the scene. Once the scene of the explosion is left, that which beast shall return. The scorpion which beast, which left the explosion as a parting gift, responsible for ripping Subaru and the others to shreds. Subaru, shit, 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 shit. He was negligent. He let his guard down. His mind had been completely submerged in lukewarm water. Just an instant before, there had been words which Beatrice told him, there had been somewhat of a softening in Echidna's attitude, resulting in a gap within his heart, and that is thoroughly why they were the way they were now. He was so pathetic, so pathetic, so pathetic from the bottom of his heart, that he teared up. 
Why, despite being made to stand before such crises, it has self displayed no growth. Displayed no change. Troubles, trials, hardships, are they not chances to grow provided by God? However, if hardships could consist of only being beaten up, bleeding out, and having bones broken, having the soul shattered, and the life robbed, then just what do humans suffer for? Echidna, Natsuki, Kuan. This is enough. Subaru, it's not enough. Not a single thing is enough. Echidna, Beatrice rather than me, right? Closing her eyes, Echidna whispered with difficulty. Responding to her words with a yell, Subaru halted his breath upon the words she followed up with. Echidna's words, though sad, were sound. Should Subaru be asked who was more valuable to him between Beatrice and Echidna, though sad, Subaru shall choose Beatrice. The worth of lives may be equal, but the worth of humans is not equal. There exists a sequential order when it comes to relationships. In a scene of choosing, that order would probably be followed. However, Beatrice wasn't here. She was not there. She was no longer anywhere. The moment the tail left by the scorpion which beast exploded, Subaru pulled Beatrice towards himself in fear. How fortunate would it have been, had he been able to protect her body and everything just like that. However, Subaru's actions were tragically slow, and his wish could not be fulfilled. The tail of the witch beast, from which the light exploded and countless stingers were scattered throughout its environs. Though Subaru had not been exposed to that explosion from close proximity either, the reason why he survived despite being fatally injured is to Beatrice's credit entirely. The moment Subaru hugged and pulled her, she tried to shield Subaru's body and vitals. As a result of which, was exposed to the concentrated light. Subaru, Huck. Echidna, I see. That child is truly like that. It seemed that even Echidna's imagination got an idea of the words he had been unable to continue. Subaru could not possibly refute her husky, sighing voice. Subaru, bleeding and wailing in agony, had been unable to even exchange a final few words with the young girl who had seemingly melted away. However, nearly her final expression, he did possess in his memories. I seemingly relieved, seemingly loving and cherishing Subaru. That far too convenient expression for Subaru, had been Beatrice's end. And if that's so, then Natsuki Subaru, who made her disappearing self make that expression, should vanish from this world without leaving the slightest trace behind. And due to the process of elimination after Beatrice's disappearance, Subaru escaped by dragging Echidna with him, who had still been breathing. As if for atonement, as if for redemption, or perhaps in an effort to be rightfully punished by the offender. And Subaru's such actions were restrained by the feebly breathing Echidna. Telling him that it would be pointless for him to do this, she, who had been so enthused about returning Anastasia's body. That too was a matter of course. Both of her legs had been blown off from the roots. At this point, she had almost stopped bleeding. Pulling the body he felt to be lighter than even Beatrice's, in a state where she had not received any immediate medical attention, what kind of a future must be awaiting her? Subaru ug a hook. When such thoughts filled his mind, Subaru stumbled upon the debris, and collapsed at that very spot. At the same time, Echidna, whom he was dragging along, was also thrown down onto the aisle, and she toppled over. Momentarily, nearly the wails of two people, seemingly cursing the entire world, echoed through the aisle. Echidna, it hurts. Ah, it really hurts. The human body, truly, hurts. Subaru, am I bad? Sorry, sorry. No, rather than that, I... Echidna, don't apologize, sincerely, Natsuki Koen. Also, I no longer have any face to show Anna. This pain is my sole repayment to Anna. Subaru, repayment. Remaining collapsed on the ground, Echidna assented, unable to even move her body, as Subaru shook his eyes, unable to comprehend the word she had spoken. Just what did repayment mean? Looking at Subaru's puzzled expression, Echidna said after all, isn't that so, by loosely opening her mouth slightly. Echidna, if I return this body to Anna now, she would have to taste this doomed pain and the fear of death. That would be hell. I should be the one to taste it alone. Subaru, ah uh, ugh. Echidna, unable to return this body to Anna for her sake and unable to assist Julius. It is fitting for me to fall into hell like this. He could understand that emotions of self-derision and self-reproach were vehemently scorching Echidna's heart. Even Subaru was able to grasp that Echidna's lifeless eyes, after having recited this, had commenced counting down to her gradually approaching death. Without having done a single thing, the powerless, insouciant, incompetent oneself. With those regrets, Echidna shall die. She shall die, leaving Subaru behind. Subaru, why? Hook. Echidna, please don't think about making it. Easy, okay? I am, yeah, fine like this. Echidna's fading life force, dreading it, Subaru raised his voice first. However, her words suddenly bestowed a new choice upon Subaru, who had been unable to do anything. He shall, make it easy. His actions, at this point, were far too slow to call it a comforting death, yet, assisting her by shortening the time of suffering and hastening her death was something even he was capable of. 
Subaru forced his agonizing body to stand up before Echidna's sidelong glance, as she breathed lightly, faintly, and he picked up a broken piece of the crumbled aisle, confirming its weight. Of a size which could be grabbed with a palm, about the size of a fist at maximum. However, even this could surely serve as a weapon for taking away the life of a young girl on the verge of death. Subaru, Echidna. Echidna. Keeping the piece of rubble in his hand, Subaru called Echidna's name, and got on his knees beside her, and denied her condition. Not a response, she did not even open her eyelids. But, it could be understood from her expression that she was not unconscious, having faintly stiffened her cheeks and pursed her lips. She perhaps no longer had any willpower left to even stop him. Should Subaru raise the piece of rubble overhead and swing it down energetically, her life would be taken easily. Melee, smashing someone's head with a stone, even I haven't done something like this. Dot. So heard Subaru, the echoing sweet voice of the young girl within his mind as he held the piece of rubble in his hand. However, this action was not for the sake of reading the Book of the Dead. That may happen in terms of results, but as of this moment, Subaru did not have that in mind whatsoever. He was being, a suicide assistant. A suicide assistant, for the sake of making someone's parting, who was already on the verge of dying, as comfortable as possible. If someone had the right to take away that life, then surely this moment alone was sincerely. This was the sole opportunity of atonement for Subaru, who happened to be present here, for Natsuki Subaru, who no longer was capable of doing anything. It was the sole opportunity, and yet. His hand trembled. The depths of his eyelids called out to agony, his throat forgot respiration and ossified. Raise it overhead, swing it down. An exceedingly easy action. The present Subaru was unable to do that. His body would not move, as if he had forgotten how to move his body. Subaru, ah. Spilling out a husky sigh, the piece of rubble fell to the aisle's floor, giving rise to a report. Conceding defeat to that report and his powerless knees, Subaru crumbled down at that spot. Subaru, no way. Can't you even do something so simple, Natsuki Subaru? Swinging down a weapon for the sake of making it easy for someone who is suffering and heading towards death, are you not capable of even that deceit? Atonement of mere words, guilt which was merely an expedient, if that's wrong then how would you explain this plight? Echidna, Natsuki Kuen. Subaru, I am. Echidna, for helping, with suicide, you. Can't even, clasp a stone. Raising her thin eyelids, powerless pale cerulean eyes looked at Subaru, who was knelt down, and whispered. Thinking that weak voice, akin to a sigh, had put Subaru's weakness to blame, he halted breathing. However, as Subaru drew back his body, Echidna unsuitably loosened her lips. Echidna, forgive me, for doubting you. Subaru. Echidna. As she lost her breath, she apologized. Echidna, apologized to him. She apologized, for having doubted Natsuki Subaru. And before he could ascertain her true intent, she died. Killing Malian and hiding her corpse, acting without saying that he had lost his memories, continuously piling up nothing but others' doubts, escaping out of the ice cage he had been trapped in, unable to fulfill the wish entrusted onto him, protected by the young girl who tried to save his heart, and finally, unable to stain his hands with blood for the sake of the dying young girl, as Subaru knelt down in his own disgrace, Echidna apologized to him and died. Subaru. He wanted to die. He wanted to forget everything that had happened just now, and die. He wanted the people all over the world to point their fingers towards Natsuki Subaru, saying that he deserved to die, and be sentenced to death penalty. Natsuki Subaru despaired upon oneself, that he had committed a sin befitting of that. He despaired. Despair, feasted upon and eroded away Natsuki Subaru's heart. Subaru. He could not move. He had no right to move. Nothing good would happen even if he moved. It had been proved. Natsuki Subaru had proved his own incompetence no, calling it incompetence would be rather cute. Instead of that, furthermore, Natsuki Subaru had proved that he was a jinx, a pest, an angel of death. Subaru. Should despair nest into one's chest, kill one's heart, what gets eaten to ruin even before one's life is one's soul. If that happens, then no longer would it remain possible to stand up. No longer would it be possible to fight against anyone. Should he realize that he himself was the genuine source of anguish without being able to defy it whatsoever, it was a natural consequence. I want to disappear. I want to vanish. Should have decided much earlier. Before things turn to this, in this different world. Should have known, must have known before coming to a place like this different world. Why, do you trouble other people's hearts by simply existing? There's no way you could ever have the right to solely occupy a part of others' hearts, no matter how small it may be. You filthy wall stain. You, an existence like the dust accumulated in the corner of a room, like the maggots which swarm over a pile of pure garbage, like a scar which never disappears located in an eye-catching spot. Natsuki Subaru, why won't you die? Even after dying, all that awaits is redoing. Who decided that? Who made sure that it would continue eternally? If once isn't enough, then die ten times, die a hundred times. 
Die until you disappear. Die until you vanish from anyone and everyone's memories, until you're no longer able to affect anything at all, until your name, your existence, your vestiges no longer remain in the hearts of anyone. I love you. Shut up. Disappear. Erase me. I love you, I love you, I love you. Keep quiet. Don't talk to me. Don't get in my way of disappearing. I want to disappear, just disappear. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I want to die. I want to disappear. I want to be smashed to pieces. I don't want to leave a single trace. I want to become something which never existed. I want to erase my existence. I want to disappear from history. I want to disappear from memories. I want to disappear from remembrances. I want to disappear even for the girl who said she won't forget. I'm worthless. I'm meaningless. I won't leave anything behind. I don't have anything worthy of leaving behind. All, anything, everything, disappear, vanish away from this world. I love you, 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 I love you. As despair ruled over his heart, the world surrounding him and everything else was concealed by the black shadow. The hollow confession of love was poured onto him ceaselessly as it drew near in order to bestow punishment upon the garbage which took the form of a crouched human. Should he be swallowed within it, would he finally disappear? Would he sink within nihility far greater than death? Would he really be abandoned within a convenient place, like a dark space which no eyes could ever reach? If I can die there then, I will. I will. Natsuki Subaru, headed towards the despair which seemingly painted out everything. That is as far as you go. A voice, chimed. A voice, akin to a silver bell, denying the end of this world, chimed. Chapter 54, Re, Starting Life in a Different World from Zero The world was about to be painted in darkness. Sitting down without any strength, the shadow stretched out its countless hands towards the motionless Subaru. Just like spirals or a whirlpool, the pitch-black hands were trying to wrap Natsuki Subaru along with his soul into its clutches. The places where he was touched, like melting, like crumbling, like coming apart, he knew that his very being was going to go hollow. But strangely enough, he couldn't feel anything unpleasant at all. Subaru His body was going to crumble as far as he could see, his very being was going to be overwritten, his soul was going to be churned up. Whilst it was infringing perhaps the greatest blasphemy that could be done to a living thing, Natsuki Subaru's mind was quiet enough to say that he was at peace. Though there too was the effects of having disappointed back then resting heavily in the depths of his heart. But it wasn't just that. Since it was just the shadow, its shadowy tendrils which were steadfast through. It was only this shadow that showed consideration for Natsuki Subaru's emotions, who wanted to vanish and disappear even now. I want to die. I want to vanish. I want to fall apart, I want to be trampled over, I want to be reduced to ashes, leaving nothing behind. Even if I am to revive over and over again, come erase my body down into ashes. This black shadow would grant such a desirable prayer, this black shadow would grant what Subaru had earnestly cried out for. I love you. Just repeating these words ad nauseum was irritating. Even if he plugged up his ears and closed his mind, she put her fingers in the gaps of his closed mind and slid them in from the open gaps, directly whispering her love. I love you. I love you. I love you. Stop this, I am fed up. No matter how many times you repeat this, I goddamn know already. I don't love you. I don't love myself. I knew about being loved. I knew it all too well. It was his parents. Both his mother and father loved Subaru from the depths of their heart. He knew that. As if he couldn't know. And so, that's why Subaru wanted to disappear. Despite being loved by his parents, he definitely couldn't love himself which had no worth in being loved. I love you. 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 Stop it, give me a break. Enough already. No matter how many times you repeat this, you can't get anything more than this. I came to this conclusion a while ago already. I knew it. And despite knowing, I just turned my eyes away from it. The people who were concerned about Subaru for dear life, with such desperation, all of them couldn't be bad people. He knew that. He couldn't not know that. So, Subaru should have just died. He should have endeavored to not be illuminated by the compassion of those bothered by Subaru's very existence. I love you. 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 
Stop it, I said I know. If I endure this torture until the end, will you grant my wish? Will you swallow me and break me and pulverize me, and erase me into oblivion, so that I may never presume on another ever again? If you can do that if you can do that, I will accept it. I want to accept it. If this is the end. If this could be made into the end, then Natsuki Subaru, even if he would disappear. I love you. 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 That's as far as you'll go. I love you. 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 A voice, chimed. It seemed just like the confession of love that was being whispered endlessly into his ears. A voice reminiscent of a silver bell rose up, piercing through the confessions of love that were painting over Natsuki Subaru's existence and the world itself. It pierced right through and reached down toward Subaru. Subaru. A light gushed out. It pierced right into the pitch-black shadowy appendages that had tried to swallow up Subaru. A shockwave broke out, the hand that had received the direct hit snapped off and was torn away, but that was just one from a countless number of them. It was just one amongst thousands that had been cut down, that effort meant absolutely nothing to the hostility coming from that enormous, powerful mass of shadows. But even so, the person who let loose that blow stepped forward with determination, dodging, evading, avoiding the evil arms of the shadow that were launched towards them, with exceptional agility. And then... Subaru. Subaru, Hook. Calling out the Subaru's name as he sat slumped down, the owner of the voice that was ever so reminiscent of a silver bell grasped his feeble hand. Subaru's body was pulled up abruptly, and she took him away from that spot with all of her strength. As if to say she wouldn't let them do that, the shadow stretched out its arms, blocking their front and rear, trying to block off both their path forwards and their path of escape. However, even with that obstacle in front of their eyes, her legs went forwards without stopping. Rhea. One hand gripping Subaru's own, sticking out her free hand, a dazzling light was born there. And immediately afterwards, a beautiful crystal of ice appeared, shining brightly, it was the very same kind as that of the ice cage which had kept Subaru confined. It was a mesmerizing, valiant repost of ice. She smashed down the pitch-black tendrils that had expanded so to make a wall in front of them and forcibly wrenched open their path. Witnessing the instant of the shadow being washed away, Subaru, who had harbored the impression that the strange shadow would swallow everything in its path, could only feel that the heart which he thought would remain forever unbeating had started to tremble again. And, as his then-frozen heart started to stir, his eyes also turned to face the beautiful face right beside him. The long silver hair of the girl glittered like the moonlight as she held Subaru's hand whilst looking straight in front, taking him along, running away. Though her survival was also confirmed, in his heart, he was not excited by this. Quite the opposite in fact, in the depths of Subaru's skull, he felt like something was going to crack. Of course he couldn't be delighted by his survival. The people he had made sure were alive, Julius, Beatrice, Echidna, he had let them all die. Though he hadn't seen the end with his own eyes, he can only imagine that things went south with what happened when he left Julius behind down with the witch beasts and Reed. Beatrice was blown to smithereens protecting Subaru, and he couldn't even ease Echidna's suffering whilst she was on the brink of death. Natsuki Subaru was pestilence personified. Death was intrinsic to his very being. As his own death was shaped into nothingness, correspondingly, he imposed that misfortune upon everyone around him, he was such a being that couldn't help but conjure to mind such a ridiculous metaphor, its poster child ensconced in such a pitch-black fate. Subaru, enough already. Amelia, huh? Subaru, I said there's no use even struggling on anymore. Subaru forcibly stopped moving his feet, struggling against Amelia pulling him along by his arm. And still, Amelia tried to pull Subaru's arm, though Subaru now possessing grit determination did not allow this. Although the disparity in their strength was evident, Subaru's determination still remained steadfast. As if noticing the dark urge from the depths of his dark irises, Amelia let out a gulp and stopped pulling his arm with all her strength. Amelia. The two of them, Subaru and Amelia, were at a standoff. Both of them were staring at each other. 
Looking around at their surroundings, there were no signs of the shadow that had tried to engulf Subaru. Had he shook it off him when he had escaped together with Amelia? If that's the case, then wouldn't they still come across it again if they turned back? It seemed as if that thing was the best way of completely erasing Natsuki Subaru. Subaru, why did you come and save me? You must be out of your mind. You thought I was a fake as well. So you could have just locked me in that ice cage and tried to kill me. Dot. These words were purposefully deceptive, twisting the truth at will, each word spoken maliciously opening more wounds. So as to never think that Amelia would once again take his hand. However, to Amelia, who saw only the truth when she looked, Subaru's despicable tactic was futile. Her eyes narrowed in anger, and she raised her voice at Subaru. Amelia, I am not trying to kill you. I just wanted to hear your side of the story, as there was something unusual about you. And since you hadn't told us about your missing memories, we... Subaru, and what of it? That may have been just something for my own convenience. Did you believe it that easily? You sure look stupid. You've gone crazy. You, Julius and Beatrice. He had been locked up in the ice cage, and he had told them the truth about having amnesia, as if he had been in desperation. No one who possessed the ability to think should have believed such words. Ram and Echidna's attitude was the correct one. And yet, despite that, more than half of the others were stupid. Subaru, no, and oh. Everyone's stupid. In the end, with things like this, in the end, even Echidna apologized to me. I don't get it. Amelia, in the end, Echidna. Subaru, what happened? Our Echidna and the others. Amelia began to ask that question to Subaru who was muttering and groaning with his face covered by his own hands. Even with how worried she looked, he would be digging his nails into that beautiful girl's heart. It was because of that that Subaru was letting all of his own emotional scars as if made of glass. Even her lifeblood had bled out, leaving behind only an expression of fragility, a feeling that keeping those existences which matter from feeling pain would be a blessing, achieving only such a heart-wrenching, desolate desire in the figure of a young girl who'd lost her life. As the thoughts revived back in his mind, Subaru let out a scream in an attempt to let the wounds he had in the depths of his heart spread open. Subaru, dead. Echidna is dead. Both of her legs were blown off, and she bled out in pain, in short, she died in anguish. Beatrice as well. Amelia, hook. Subaru, she even, protected me. What an absurd thing, cutting off its own tail, if only I'd noticed earlier, but I didn't, and so she died. She said she would forget me. Even if Subaru had forgotten, Beatrice would not forget. Beatrice had firmly declared that she would help Subaru regain his memories without fail. But, she had perished, straight after she had said that. It was all bark and no bite. Words are wind. And immediately after she had spoken this, she had kept Subaru away from death. And with a face full of relief, she had vanished from this world. Subaru, if she was going to disappear like that, I should have stopped her. I took her out? I took her away? Whatever, how it happened doesn't matter. At any rate, if I took her from anywhere other than here, I never should have. If I hadn't, then. Then things wouldn't have ended with her meeting that fate, vanishing with that expression on her face. Subaru, that's right, that Julius guy too. Surely, around about now, he must already be, in a place with so many scary witch beasts, and with that reed guy inconveniencing him, and then being all like go please. What idiocy dot. Everyone here is an idiot. What on earth were they expecting? Entreating, taking back, having apologized for doubting him, what on earth were they spouting out? What would become of their request? What would the meaning be in taking them back? Wasn't it natural for them to doubt him? Natsuki Subaru was here because he betrayed everything that hung over him. Survive and have some peace and quiet alone, since that was unbearable, he wanted to disappear and die. He was the most idiotic, stupid, utterly helpless, he couldn't save anything. If those weren't Natsuki Subaru, then just what would they be? Emilia, me and Subaru met for the first time at a place called the Loot House in the Royal Capital. Subaru Subaru had sunk to a bottomless swamp of self-blame and self-doubt with no escape, he couldn't even move his own body. Amelia's sudden confession had made Subaru's eardrums throb her words came out as if it was bringing fond, precious, nostalgic memories back to her. Subaru Ha! Huh. Subaru was dumbfounded, all he could do was let go of his breath in his lungs when he received those words with no context so suddenly. In no way was this meant to scorn or mock Amelia's sudden actions. Subaru's consciousness simply couldn't keep up to that degree, and was genuinely stunned into silence. And yet, Amelia ignored his reaction, proffering down a finger, as she allowed more memories to resurface. Amelia, back then, Felchon stole a really important insignia from me. I was in a mad rush with Puck to try and get it back. And then, after we pursued her, we fought against Meili's one Isan. We were in grave danger, but Reinhardt came to save us. 
And after that, just as I breathed a sigh of relief, Meili's one Isan went straight for me. Subaru saved me from that dot. Subaru. Amelia, that was when I first met with Subaru. Don't you remember it? Hearing her question, Subaru shook his head. Even though she had recited those memories in detail, he had no knowledge of even a small bit of what she had said. It was to be expected of course. Those were the memories of Amelia and Natsuki Subaru. No matter what, those were bits of memories spun by Natsuki Subaru, who kept behaving in ways unimaginable to him. Amelia, but Subaru protected me causing him serious injuries, so I brought you back with me to Roswell's mansion. And there, whilst she complained, Beatrice treated your wounds. Ram and, surely even Rem got on well with Subaru. Subaru. Amelia, and then, without her wani-san, Meili acted wickedly and spurred on the attack of some witch beasts. Subaru and Ram held them back until Roswell finished them off. I was staying in the mansion, it was when you'd also promised to take me on a day -ite. don't you remember it? Subaru. He shook his head. He didn't remember it. He had never done such things. He never had. Amelia, and you know we did so many things in the mansion. We made mayonnaise, we drank alcohol with everyone, Puck made it snow, we played the king game, and after that, I was called to the royal capital for the royal selection, right? Subaru. Amelia, it was also the first time I ever had a big fight with Subaru. I didn't want to hurt Subaru anymore, nor make you overdo things, and I was scared and didn't understand why you were so kind to me. So, I thought that everything would have come to an end when we fought. As she recounted these memories, Amelia's voice started to faintly tremble. There was a mixture of joy and sorrow, anxiety and expectation, various conflicting emotions. Subaru was assailed by a feeling of being completely parched. Unbearable, unbearable, unbearable was this yearning scorching his chest. For the sake of Amelia revealing this expression in its entirety no, for this single reason, that yearning was unbearable. Amelia, I didn't understand what was happening, at the time I was being swept away by the uneasy situation, and then Subaru came running back to me when I was my most depressed, and after that. Subaru. Amelia, and after that, what was it that you said? Do you remember it? Subaru, I don. I don't remember. It didn't come out. They really weren't going to come out. The trembling of Amelia's voice, her appeal, her echoing voice that clung onto him, all of these made it evident. The Subaru that was here now was not the Natsuki Subaru that she wanted. Having this obvious fact thrust before him, Subaru broiled in envy and jealousy towards himself. Why is it you, Natsuki Subaru? You and I, why are we so different, Natsuki Subaru? Amelia, and everyone thought like this. Return the real Natsuki Subaru. The you, the Natsuki Subaru right now, just dropped dead. If it was you that were in this place, just how much? Amelia, but, I remember everything. I remember what Subaru promised me, and what Subaru told me, and what Subaru has done. I remember everything. Joy and hope were lodged in that smile, so that both sadness and anxiety would never have been there. Seeing Amelia's smile, Subaru's lips trembled. There was, nothing. It was, nowhere. Everything he had said, everything he had done, everything he had promised. Inside of this body, inside of this head, inside of this heart, at the depths of his soul, there was nothing. And so he said. Subaru, I don't remember. I don't even remember it. Who are you, who are you? Who are you all? Who are you all talking about? He exploded. Some time ago, with Beatrice and Echidna, he had let himself burst into a fit of emotions, and once again, he also shouted this here. Amelia. Faced with his bellow, Amelia widened her amethyst eyes. All the while still gazing at her, Subaru rapidly blinked his eyes, clearing away the hot tears that had welled up there, with an even dirtier voice which strove to preserve a malicious tone, he continued to bellow. Subaru, putting your life on the line for someone else's sake. Springing into action straight away for someone else's sake. Running so to give it your all for someone else's sake. Accomplishing something by risking my life for someone else's sake. Can there be such things? Can I do such things? To hear all of Amelia's recollections, and reply that he couldn't remember. Unable to answer Beatrice's question before she vanished, still bearing that regret in his heart, he'd listen to Amelia gently, almost convincingly, talk about her memories. Julius entrusted in him, Beatrice believed in him, Echidna forgave him, Amelia desired him. All of that for Natsuki Subaru. The one that had been summoned to this parallel world, the real him. Subaru, don't joke about. Such a guy cannot be Natsuki Subaru. There was no way that someone could entrust their wishes to Natsuki Subaru. Subaru, I know all too well. About how pathetic and disgusting and helpless and what a rotten bastard Natsuki Subaru is. There was no way that anyone could believe in Natsuki Subaru, in his heart. Subaru, who are you actually looking at? What are you talking about? Such a guy is nowhere to be seen. Everything is a downright lie. The things that guy showed, the things that guy said, everything everything. It was just random crap that he spouted out from his mouth. There isn't any value in believing in it. There was no way that someone could pardon Natsuki Subaru from his sins. 
Subaru, you think there's any value in Natsuki Subaru? Natsuki Subaru is scum. He's a useless rotten bastard. I know this better than anyone else. Like hell anyone would want Natsuki Subaru to be along with them. Subaru. There was no worth. There was no worth or anything to be desired anywhere. Natsuki Subaru was pestilence personified. No matter whom it may be, everything just amounted to wounds, loss and death. Thus, let's end it. Amelia and everyone else needed not get hurt anymore because of that guy. Subaru, it doesn't have to be, me dot. He merely did mutter those words. It didn't have to be himself, no, it'd be way better if it wasn't Natsuki Subaru. Why did they entrust things to a man who couldn't do anything? Why did they believe in him? Why did they forgive him? Why did they desire him? There should be more ways for them to manage things better. There should be someone else to help them manage things better. Even if that someone was the Natsuki Subaru that everyone wished for, he was nowhere to be found anymore. Natsuki Subaru was a pretense that he never possessed from the beginning. A vain being. Subaru, someone like me, just disregard and toss me away. Someone smarter than me, someone stronger than me will turn up. I am. He said that he couldn't do anything. It was just this sense of sheer helplessness that overwhelmed Natsuki Subaru. Everyone has their lot in life. One appropriate to them. He wanted everyone to understand that. Subaru was unqualified to walk next to Amelia and the others. He was unqualified to be desired by them. He was neither strong nor smart. They needed not desire to have such a Subaru around. Therefore he would. Amelia, my name is Amelia. Just Amelia. Dot. Subaru, huh? Having spat out his sheer sense of helplessness, with his heart dominated by the things he wanted to spit out as he spiraled towards hollowness, the bell-like voice rang out, like a surprise attack, causing him to let out a sound. Subaru. He didn't understand the meaning of those words. No, not the meaning. It was her intention that he didn't understand. Lifting his head up, Subaru looked at the person who had introduced herself as Amelia standing right in front of him. She had her hand on top of her ample chest. Within her big, round, amethyst eyes, Subaru could see his own figure reflected, his breath was taken away by their shimmer. Amelia continued on with her speech, right in front of Subaru. Amelia, there are so many things I have to tell you, and so many things I have to ask you. Many 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 things. But right now I have to hear just one thing. Dot. Subaru. Amelia, Julius, Beatrice, and Echidna. And now, I've taken you by the hand, by running away together. I wanted to protect you at any cost. I didn't want you to die, so by doing that. Amelia closed her eyes and plunged into thought, full of emotion. After a few seconds, she broke off her speech. He could see that various emotions were coursing through her chest. These even included her feelings of anxiety for her companions who weren't here. Amelia's cherry blossom lips quivered with those emotions fresh in her mind. Amelia, you who have made us feel that way, who are you? Subaru. Amelia, please. Let me hear your name. Dot. At Amelia's question, the very depths of his heart shook within his chest. The manifestation of her intentions weren't to deny the Natsuki Subaru in front of her eyes or to recover the old Subaru. They were an affirmation of Natsuki Subaru. Subaru. The one before us is a fake, return the real Natsuki Subaru to us, words along those lines, behavior along those lines, resentment along those lines, would have been easier to bear. Because, it was nothing other than something Subaru had desired himself. He still preferred the side of those who said that his self standing in front of their eyes was a fake, that they wanted him to return Natsuki Subaru, the ones who said that to him, the ones who wished that from him, the ones who tormented him with that, he still preferred their side. But, it was Amelia that, no, not just her. Up until here, everyone who had spoken to Natsuki Subaru had implored the same thing. Irrespective of whether he was strong or weak. Thus, even if he let himself be seen so shamefully, and couldn't help forgetting everything, he still hadn't changed. By their words, by their behavior, by their life, they showed their need for Natsuki Subaru. Subaru, why? Amelia. Subaru, why are you here, Natsuki Subaru? What can that guy do? What do you expect from him? He didn't understand it. In this. In just this overwhelming despair, in their helpless numerical inferiority, what would happen if Natsuki Subaru was there? In what way would the situation improve? Could they break through this? Subaru, a weak, dumb, miserable, spineless guy, what do you even see in him? Amelia, maybe it's as you say. Dot. Amelia cast her eyes down at Subaru and treating her with this rather than denying, shaking her head begrudgingly. Her eyes were bordered by long eyelashes, her voice ever so reminiscent of a silver bell tickled his heart. Everything about Amelia seemed to be a linchpin that tied Natsuki Subaru to this world. Amelia, there are plenty of people stronger than Subaru, and surely there are many people smarter than Subaru. But, I prefer to be with you, Subaru, no matter what time. I believe that Subaru will do so for me, thus do I wish. After all. Subaru. 
Amelia, after all, if you're going to help me anyways, having it be someone I like, would make me so so much happier than someone who just does it because they're there and can dot. And, whilst smiling, Amelia said this. Whilst smiling and with her cheeks slightly blushing, she said this. Subaru. Subaru took a breath, as if gasping. Having received Amelia's words, in that instant, surely all time had stopped within his body. With a badum, badum, he could feel his heart pounding. And at the same time in which his feelings had boiled up from with him, another emotion rose up, it was scorn towards Natsuki Subaru. Dot. Subaru, ha. I see, Natsuki Subaru. Dot. Did you fall in love with this beautiful girl? Someone who was probably way out of my league. As if such a young woman would even give him the time of the day. Such a cool knight, such a wise woman, such a sweet little girl. And finally, such a beautiful girl right in front of his eyes. Entrusting to you, believing in you, forgiving you, wishing it were you. Not asking you to be a savior, nor even expecting you to be a savior, merely, if those staggering walls had to be crossed, rather than someone capable, just wishing it were you. Amelia, my name is Amelia. Just Amelia. Dot. Once again, Amelia gave the silent Subaru her name. She looked over to him with her amethyst eyes. Subaru's dark brown eyes gazed back at those eyes right in front of him. And then. Amelia, please. Let me hear your name. Dot. Subaru, I am. He hesitated forming his words, hearing Amelia's question once again. He had denied it over and over again. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. He couldn't be it. He had repeatedly denied it. So, this was surely nothing more than convenient wordplay. Entrusted, believed in, forgiven, desired. In this desert's tower, what if there were the qualifications to be treated like that by them? In this desert's tower, what if there was someone that could save Amelia and the others? If that was Natsuki Subaru, then if that Natsuki Subaru was nowhere to be found. Subaru, my name is. Natsuki Subaru. Dot. Amelia. Subaru, entrusted by Julius, believed in by Beatrice, forgiven by Echidna, desired by Amelia, by you. If that man's name is Natsuki Subaru, then. The black haired boy answered the young woman with the glimmering silver hair, staring with his dark brown eyes into her amethyst ones. To the question that had quivered from her cherry blossom lips, his blood stained lips answered back. Subaru, I am Natsuki Subaru. Dot. Right now, feeble, without strength, mind and body racked by despair, but still he declared it. For Amelia, for Amelia and everyone else, for you, for you and everyone else, for their safety, for peace and quiet, thus did he wish, thus did he implore. Amelia. Subaru strongly declared it. In his heart, he hadn't fully wiped away the pieces of distrust towards Natsuki Subaru. Dot. Even now, the one that caused his death hadn't left Subaru's mind no, not his death, Meili's. The face and voice of that wicked man. Mayhaps the time where it would be wiped away would never come. But it's okay. Even so, it's okay. It's not like he wanted to be saved. It's not like he would cling on them, wishing to be saved either. I want you all to be saved, he thought. I want to help you all, he implored. If that can be done by Natsuki Subaru then I will do it. The reason you started running, the destination you set out for better be the same. So long as the road envisioned is the same, then we're just bitter enemies in the same boat, even if I hate you, I will not complain. Let me, let Natsuki Subaru save Amelia and the others. Subaru, thank you, Amelia. You made me believe in that dot. Amelia, Subaru, I am. With Subaru's reply, ripples rose within Amelia's amethyst eyes. Her lips quivering, Amelia started to somehow string together some words towards Subaru who had defined himself as such. And just after that. Subaru, hook. Up until then, nothing had disturbed the two of them talking. The situation which had until now remained peaceful, cracked in an instant. Subaru, Amelia. Near them, the aisleway where the two had been conversing was in a flash crushed and pulverized by a shadow. The aisleway lost its shape and Amelia, losing her balance, lost her footing. Facing her, Subaru who had barely clung onto his foothold strongly kicked against the floor. At that moment, the tower lost its shape, smashed up and weathered. Perishing next to lumps of stone cladded in the aroma of sand. Subaru immediately dived towards Amelia who had started to fall. The distance shrunk, catching up to her silver hair still lingering above, and finally, he closed his arms around her slender body. Amelia, Subaru. As he clutched her slender, soft, warm body, Amelia stirred, calling out Subaru's name. She was probably trying to change her position in his arms, trying to put herself lower. And because of that, the one that helped and the one that had been helped reversed. Amelia and everyone else were truly nuts. But alas, Amelia's effort had been completely useless in this situation. Amelia, with her back to the ground, unable to see where she was falling to, probably didn't get the swing of things. It was neither the hard floor of the tower nor the sprawling sand dunes outside that would come to meet Subaru and her. It would be the pitch-black shadows wrapping this tower that would lead to the end of everything. So, the two of them would end up being swallowed by the shadow whilst embracing each other just like that. No, the opposite. This surely would become the beginning. 
That which they'd started once, he would start once again right here, from the end, anew. For that reason, he would make a promise. Right here in this world, in this place, he would make the words he exchanged with Amelia real. Having been saved, having wished of wanting to save them. Let's start from the end, holding all of that. The time for sputtering and babbling was over. Infatuation like a curse is nice, isn't it? It's what I always wanted. He didn't know whether Natsuki Subaru was worthy of being loved. But since the requirements needed to be loved by Amelia, by Amelia and everyone else were there. Even if they still forget, even if they, even if they don't remember the words you told me, in this ending world, in this world beginning anew. Even if they still forget, even if they, even if they don't remember the words that I struck in you all, in this ending world, in this world beginning anew. I will remember. I will remember everything. Because even now, even if I have to cling onto them, I will not forget them. Subaru, even if you forget I will not forget any of you. Dot. Always remember, Natsuki Subaru. The shadow drew ever closer, its darkness engulfing Amelia and Subaru. Just like that, Amelia and Natsuki Subaru were sinking, sinking towards the depths of the shadows. Metempsychosis, everything was coming apart, everything was becoming zero, the end was coming as expected. And it began in the place where everything became zero. A battle to kill Natsuki Subaru and bring back Natsuki Subaru. End of chapters 53 and 54, a voice chimed.